that we need to address in the bills. Good morning, thank you. So, uh, just to be clear here, you said no continuing resolution. I don't want any help. Right, I understand that, but if, if you are on the precipice of getting a coronavirus deal, and you can't, if you are on the precipice... Oh, okay, okay. But, yeah. but what shifted, in your opinion, when the Problem Solvers Caucus had a much larger bill a few months ago, you did not like that piece of yeah. legislation? But what, said, what, what has shifted now when they're on board with this piece that's come out of the Senate? Perhaps you missed what I said earlier. Joe Biden committed to ending and crushing the virus and having a Build a Better America uh, initiative, Big Back Better, a vaccine answer to our prayers, an answer to our prayers of 95% effectiveness in terms of Pfizer and Moderna, and there may be others uh, coming forward. Uh, that makes, that is a total game changer, a new president and a vaccine. So th there's nothing to, th these are different, what, what was then before was not more of this. This is, has simplicity. It's what we've had in our bills. It's for a shorter period of time, but that's okay now because we have a new president, a president who recognizes that we need to depend on science to stop the virus, a president who understands that America's working families need to have money in their pockets in a way that takes them into the future without any of the contraptions of any of the other bills uh, that the administration was associating itself with them before. We feel very excited about the prospect that the, there's a bipartisan bill, because I told members, I'm not bringing any more bills that are not bipartisan. We wanted to, to, to um, show what needs to be done in the interest of negotiation. They're negotiating, it's a good product, it's not everything we want. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't want the Republicans to think that, we, uh, that this is a dream come true. It is not. But it is a path forward. Yeah. Well, you don't have to accept half of a loaf months ago. When you said, I'm not going to accept half a loaf. No, I'm going to tell you something. No. Don't, don't characterize what we did before as a mistake, as a preface to your question, if you want an answer. That was not a mistake. It was a decision. And it has taken us to a place where we can do the right thing without other, shall we say, considerations in the legislation that we don't want. Now, that is it. Now, th the fact is, I'm very proud of where we are. My chairs, my chairs have worked very hard on all of this. They were not even happy with a, a proposal that we made the other day before we saw this proposal. They thought we had come back to too small. So it's not about an individual, it's about how we address the needs of the American people. And we have to do it in a scientific way, and we have to do it in a way that recognizes people need food on the table. They need to get their rent paid. They need money in their pockets. They need their unemployment insurance to be there. They do not need a whole cacophony of other things that are on the agenda that have nothing to do with meeting their needs. So we're very pleased at where it is, and as I say, with a Democratic president committed to a scientific solution for this, with the idea that we will have a vaccine, it's a complete game changer from them. Speaker, the, 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 the petition that... No, um, she, you, you, recognizing you. Oh, thank you. Joe Biden said that on his first day in office, he will use Title IX to give transgender students access to sports, bathrooms, and locker rooms in accordance with their gender identity in all federally funded schools. Does he have the power to unilaterally do this, and do you agree with this? Yes, and I think he does. Yes, ma'am. Speaker Pelosi, the uh, petition that Rita Hart um, is, is uh, going to file soon as far as her race is concerned over in Iowa, how is, uh, how is the House going to prevent a, a situation that was seen in 1985 between McCloskey um, and, and, uh, and his Republican opponent? And would you encourage uh, the, the, uh, the loser of the New York 22 race to do the same thing if their recount ends in a very you know, slim well, margin? Uh, the... The issue in relating to Iowa is an issue for the House Administration Committee. It is my understanding 
uh, that the uh, Rita Hart, an excellent candidate for Congress, has uh, will be asking the House to take this up. But that, for further information about the technicalities of that, that becomes that's a House, not a political, but a House administration matter. House decides who it will seek. We don't have any idea. That New York is a completely different situation. New York is a completely dis different situation. New York, the, there could be 1,500, 5,000 votes not counted yet. So that is going into the court. I think Monday is the day in the court. And that is, uh, and that is what is, um, uh, we'll see what happens in the court, and that may end up in the Congress. I don't know. But the court will decide which votes will be counted. But that's like down to 12 votes. It's interesting. People should know. Everyone should know his or her vote counts. Six votes are what the spread is at the moment in uh, Iowa. Twelve votes. Now, this is on the basis of hundreds of thousands of votes cast. Of hundreds of thousands of votes cast. So it is, um, it is one of those uh, matters that time will tell. We'll see what the court says. We'll see what the uh, House administration options are and what they decide to do as they go forward. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to get a clarification as it relates to your conversations with, with uh, Leader McConnell. Yeah. So is this now a situation where we're expecting a, an omnibus and any sort of coronavirus relief to be meshed into one piece of legislation? That would be our hope. Vote? That would be our hope because that is the vehicle leading, leaving the station. And that's probably... Uh, I was pleased that he wanted to to do it that way because that's how we have I thought would that's what we thought would be the best way to do the vehicles leaving the station. All in other words, you see a bill come to the floor, you don't see the whole underpinnings and the orchestration of what it takes to get to a place. So if there's a vehicle and we can add uh, this language once we see the text, uh, that is what we would be doing. Would you need a, would you need a an agreement on both components to bring something to the floor. Oh yeah, 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 and that's what we're that's what we're working on. Yes, and, and because we would want a big strong vote, as we will have. Getting back to our earlier on the national uh, defense bill, we're very proud of the bipartisanship that has gone into that. Uh, the uh, quality of life issues there for uh, military families, also the a system to change the names of the bases that were named for white supremacists. In some cases, by design, named for former members of the Confederacy, well after the Civil War. So again, there are many things in there that, about our practical uh, uh, responsibility to protect and defend, but also about our values. For us, that was not an, a provision or an issue. It was an ethic it was a, uh, it was a, a value. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.